This year is coming to an end, and I think it was one of the best cinematic years in a long time. On the other hand, there were many movies that either disappointed me or were plain and simple awful. I'm going to share the worst movies that I have seen in 2023. Let's go. I was anticipating Indiana Jones and the Dial of the Destiny, mainly due to two things, James Mangold and Harrison Ford. Did I expect this movie to be good? Considering Crystal Skull was a huge step down, I thought under Mangold's direction, this movie would be at least fun. My hopes were completely shattered when I watched it. I almost wanted to exit the theater while the movie was still showing. The biggest issue here was that there is no magic, no true indie feel. Yeah, sure. Harrison Ford still can kick ass even in his 80s, but that simply wasn't enough. The story is messy with tonal issues. Mads Mikkelsen was wasted, and I mean, it wasn't the first time. Say hi to Doctor Strange. As good as James Mangold is, I think this wasn't his movie to make. It's over two hours, but never sets its goals clear. The biggest positive, I'd say, was the first 20 minutes of the film. The Equalizer 3 takes another go at it with Denzel Washington in the lead. Honestly, the whole movie felt like a parody or a travel vlog following Denzel in Italy. He is just chilling with a cup of tea, and from time to time, kicks a bit ass. And again, sits in a cafe. The brutality of the action scenes was the best thing. It's with no remorse, and compared to the last two movies in that aspect, The Equalizer 3 is better. This was a massive disappointment because I really wanted to like this one. Justin Simeon's Haunted Mansion has a great atmosphere and a good cast. There's no denying that from technical aspects, the movie is done well, but for a two-hour-long Disney film, it's shallow, empty, boring with underdeveloped characters and problems that arise in the plot. You know Rob Minkoff's 2003 version is just more exciting, and that's what is missing in many Disney productions nowadays. At least, Jared Leto, again, was able to fully convince me that he is AI for real. Hidden Strike is not the worst thing you can watch, but nothing amazing either, with weird production that, in certain moments, looks great, and in others, is visible to an eye that it was shot in studios. I love low-grade B action movies, but this one falls flat and chaotic from a storyline standpoint. Jackie Chan will never lose his action star charm even when he is 100 years old, and John Cena can either be a decent sidekick in movies, or just plain and simple, a dumb character. I thought Chris McKay's Reenfield would be quite good considering the Lego Batman is a gem, and Tomorrow War, despite its cliches, was a decent one-time watch. But this was just a movie where Nick Cage does his shenanigans playing Dracula and probably going off the script. I must say that whenever he popped up on screen, I was interested in what was going on. There are plenty of creative shortcomings and characters in the story, but it led me to think about how much cooler this movie would have been if it wasn't making a fool out of itself and actually be a horror flick. Because Nick Cage truly could be a very dark Dracula, and that's what his character screamed for. Well, another Nick Cage flick. The man stars in like six movies every year, and Sympathy for the Devil is another one where Cage does what he does best. Over-the-top energized performance, which honestly is the best part of the whole movie. The rest of it was a simplistic, tonally one-sided cat and mouse game. There's not a lot of logic, nor should you try to find one, but considering some good technical elements, this movie could have been more engaging. Joel Kinnaman is decent, but I never cared about his character, and that again goes to underdeveloped writing. For hardcore Nick Cage fans, this movie will definitely work, but don't get me wrong, I do like Nick Cage. Blue Beetle. Damn. Where should I start? This movie is all over the place. Campy, cheesy, and with one of the most boring origin stories I have ever seen in any comic book movie. The Flash, compared to Blue Beetle, is a masterpiece. The theme here is the power of family, bringing Latino culture into the mix, which is good, but the choices here do make the movie a half-baked snooze fest. The movie is two hours long but manages to feel like a three-hour outing, which, well, doesn't speak in high volumes, right? I literally can't remember anything that was worth remembering. This is a typical and outdated comic book formula. I'm not sure if this was a parody of Comic-Con, but it sure felt like it. While this is another MCU flick, there's zero magic, heart, and gravitas that usually make Marvel productions so beloved. Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, is a perfect example of MCU studios becoming a shell of themselves. The writing is some of the worst I've ever seen. Everything gets shoved down our throats without even letting us process what the hell is going on. The story doesn't breathe, it just goes at one pace. There are so many terrible jokes and that's one of the problems too, where the filmmakers and the studios think that the MCU is the best comedy, so we're gonna add every butt joke, every fun one-liner imaginable into this movie. And the movie failed once again, proving the MCU needs to refigure the way how they approach their movies. 
I love Guy Ritchie as a filmmaker, and this year he released two movies, The Covenant being amazing while Operation Fortune is just a mindless mess through and through. The cast is stacked with Jason Statham, Aubrey Plaza, Hugh Grant, Josh Hartnett, and the list goes on. Was there any plot? I don't recall because the movie is so bland with an unattractive story and weirdly written characters. There's not a lot going on, and as a Ritchie fan, I was expecting to see something intriguing, something that lights up fireworks, but nothing. Lastly, we have The Black Demon. Some of you are hearing about this movie for the first time. This is a cheap representation of a shark flick, where the shark only appears in the last 15 minutes. Until then, the movie tries to build up something that's already clear in the first 10 minutes. Family dynamics are rubbish. The editing is inconsistent with many flaws. Josh Lucas needs to fire his agent because this is unacceptable. This movie does everything that you shouldn't do in a flick that's based around creatures. The Meg 2 compared to this looks like the best movie ever made. Thank you all for watching. Make sure to subscribe and see you in the next video.